Hi everyone, welcome to Jam Online again. This week we are on the final instalment of God's Story Part 5. Um, and last week we learned that from the beginning of time, when man and woman, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, that God worked out a rescue plan, a way for humans to come back to him. He made a way by sending Jesus to the cross. You see, Jesus had done nothing wrong and he took the punishment that we deserved so that we didn't have to be punished for our wrongdoing. Um, someone once described it to me this way, that God and man had become separated. We learned that Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden and it was like the sin, the bad things that had happened, made a big chasm. That's like a big um, crack in the earth formed and there was and there was something separating God and man and there was no way to cross that chasm because it was really deep and it was really wide and God and man could much try making a bridge across but it would just fall down into the chasm and there was just no way to get across but what happened when Jesus died on the cross that it was like God put Jesus there and he put the cross right down so the the tall part of the cross went right down into the chasm and the crossbar made a bridge that meant that man could now get back to God. But it was a choice still. The man had to choose to go across the bridge to be back with God. And that meant that because Jesus died on the cross, everyone everywhere has the chance to come to Jesus, to ask him to forgive their sins and to become Christians. We can choose to walk across that big bridge and be with God again because of what he did. However, not everyone knows this. There are many people who would probably love to become Christians, but they don't know about Jesus and what he did for them. There are people in faraway countries who don't know. There are people here in this country who don't know. There are old people who don't know and young people who don't know. Rich people who know nothing about him and poor people. And some of them may never have even heard about him. And that's why we, as Christians, are told we must tell other people. So, if we think in that story last week about Woody, what happened to Woody in the end of the movie? How did he get rescued? Well, in Toy Story 2, the other toys made a plan. Buzz came with Rex and, and Mr Potato Head and they all came and they rescued Woody. Um, but after that, while Woody was in um, Al's toy barn, Woody had met some other toys. Woody had met Pete, the old prospector, Bullseye, the horse, and Jessie, the cowgirl. And Woody didn't just want to go home to be with Andy and think, that's nice, I've been rescued now, I'm safe. He thought about the other toys, and he thought about Jessie, and he thought, I want to rescue her too. He thought, now that I'm rescued, I need to go back. And Woody is desperate to rescue Jessie before she gets forced onto an aeroplane and sent to Japan. And he fights really hard to rescue Jessie. Because you see, he's been rescued and he knows what it's like to be rescued. How good it feels. And he now wants to rescue others. And that's what it's like for us as Christians. If we are a Christian, we have been rescued so that we can rescue others by telling them about Jesus and who he is and why he's special and how he helps us, and how he wants to help them too. Now, there are many famous missionaries who have devoted their entire lives to doing just that, to telling other people about God. One of them is a lady called Amy Carmichael. She travelled all the way to India and told children all about Jesus. But before she did that, she had a dream. She dreamt that she was on the edge of a cliff and that lots of people were rushing towards the edge of the cliff and then they were falling off and dying on the rocks below. Amy was horrified and she tried to stop as many people as she could, as, she, as possible. She tried her best running around trying to stop people from falling off the cliff. But she wasn't always fast enough to rescue all of them. Then Amy looked around and she saw that there were some other people on the top of the cliff picking flowers. She shouted to them to come and help, come and help. But they all looked away saying that they were too busy. And, they, and Amy just kept rushing backward and forward, trying, still trying to help all the people, as many as she could, but she couldn't reach them all. When she woke up, 
she prayed to God and asked him to explain to her what the meaning was of this dream. And God told her that this was her. She was rescuing people from falling to hell. And that those picking flowers on the top of the cliff were people who had been rescued themselves, but refused to become rescuers. Well, Amy decided she definitely didn't want to be one of those people picking flowers on top of the cliff. She had been rescued. She knew Jesus and she wanted to rescue others. And that was what made her make that choice to give her life to go to India to tell other people. Now, what does that mean for us? What about us? If we're asked to tell other people about Jesus, can we sometimes be like the people picking flowers? Can we think we're too busy to do that? I think I said, no, I certainly can sometimes. But some of you might be thinking, it's not that I'm too busy, but you might be wondering, how? How can I rescue other people? How can I tell someone about Jesus? Well, I've got another story for you. I used to be a lifeguard and I know all about what it takes to rescue somebody from the water when they're in trouble. And I can tell you that the best thing to do, especially if it's in deep water out of the sea, is to get them into a lifeboat. And it can be really tricky to get somebody into a lifeboat. It's hard work because their clothes and they get full of water and they're really heavy. And it's not an easy thing to lift them into the boat. But it's even harder if you're in the water with them yourself. And what you actually need to do is you need to, you need to get them positioned, held onto the side of the lifeboat and hold their hands there. You need to climb into the boat yourself first because from the boat, from that higher position, it's much easier to drag them in. And you can also ask for help from other people who are in the boat. So as Christians, we're in a much better position to help somebody tell them about Jesus. If we don't know Jesus ourselves, how can we possibly tell them other people about him? So the first job is that if we're not a Christian, we need to become a Christian ourselves. And if that's you, you can get in contact with me or one of the other jam leaders and we would love to talk to you a bit more about how you do that. But I think that most of you are already Christians. So that's you're in a really good position already. But you can ask for help from others in the boat. That means you can ask for help from older Christians, from the jam leaders. We're not at jam at the moment right now, but you can ask your parents or other people that you know. Or you can email me. And I would love to give you some help with that. And also you can pray to God because let's not forget that this rescue plan was God's rescue plan. He was the one all that time ago, right back in the beginning, that came up with this plan because he wants to save people. He wants people to be saved. And it says in the Bible, in Romans 10, verse 13, everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. So all we have to do is talk to our friends and those people we know about who Jesus is to us and how much he means to us and how he's helped us and ask God to do the rest. So I'm going to finish by saying a prayer that God will help us with that task, help me and help you. Heavenly Father, I thank you that each one of us has been rescued. I thank you that I have been rescued and I thank you that you've rescued my friends at Jan, Lord and that you are willing to rescue those who haven't been rescued already. Lord, help us to play our part in becoming rescuers by telling other people about Jesus. Amen.